to Nomad PDU, just following on from the pre-Christmas refresher on charging, I'm going to talk about your fridges. Uh, those of you might be buying brand new fridges uh, coming up for Christmas and so on. The key thing about fridges, you need to understand, they're not just a fridge you plug in and away you go and then it runs and runs and runs until the battery's flat. It doesn't work that way. Fridges will have running voltage limitations. May have three or four different settings and they may have a cutoff voltage of say 10.1 to 10.6. Some are actually cut out at 11 volt. So as soon as that fridge sees 11 volt under, it stops working, your fridge starts to get warm. That is not a power source issue. That is the fact that you haven't looked at what the fridge does. So you can have low, medium, high and eco settings, depends on the make models. And there's a million out there, so we, we're not across them all. But typically anything between 10.1 and 10.6 volt, a fridge may stop working. My fridge that I've got here just to, uh, is not a, a, a great fridge. Um, it does the job for me, no problems. It cuts out at 10.6. Never had an issue with it. Um, throw it around and it works perfectly for me. It's a, a 50 litre fridge. So we're going to use this for an example. That fridge will cut out at 10.6 volt. Okay, the Nomad will shut down at an under 9 volt. So there is a difference of about a half the pack there. So that will happily shut down at 10.6, cut back in about 11 volt. So it sees 11 volt, it starts coming back in. For me, it's not a problem because I cycled my off-gridding all the time. So I've got a solar panel that's up, it's charging it every day, uh, or I'm driving. So my Nomad never gets down to probably less than you know 11.8 or something like that. So it's never an issue. Um, all day, every day, solar panels out. I'm never ever going to worry about that fridge getting to see less than 11 half volt. That's no problem. But some of you are not going to do that. And you might say, I want to just run that fridge until I can get everything out of the Nomad. Uh, to me, you need to be looking at how you cycle it because you can charge a Nomad up when you're home. You can go out camping without a solar panel and so on and see how long your fridge runs. So if you want to get around that uh, fridging limitation issue, again, it's not a power source. But everyone looks at the power as being the issue. It never is. It's always the fridge and the way the fridge operates. So what you can do is use the CDCs you would have seen in the previous tutorial. A CDC takes a power source, okay, at 9 to 32 volt and converts to 12.6 volt. So what I'm going to use here, this is a 10 amp SIGA DC, and I've got a 20 amp over here. So the 20 the 10 amp SIGA DC, what I can do with my fridge is this plugged in here. Right, good example. That's showing 11 volt. My fridge is showing 10.8. Remember to keep your runs from your fridges to your power sources as short as you can because you do get voltage drop. If you've got a 10 meter run between the fridge and the power source, you will get a massive voltage drop. So that's what that's doing there. Now, if I want to run this Nomad right now flat because that says maybe 10.6 and it's going to stop working, what I can do if I wanted to, I can get my SIGA DC. Uh, here, which I could plug in there, and that's going to give me my 12.6 uh, volt, and that's a 10 amp. So I could run two fridges of this quite happily that were 50, 50 uh, litre each, um, or even a 105 litre fridge on one of these, because it's going to pull less than 9 amp uh, when it starts up, okay? But I'm going to use this one here, which is because I've got the lights plugged in there at the moment. I'm going to use my Anderson DC, this step up, this is a 20 amp one. So again, the input that's coming in, so what's, what's providing power now, is I can use this to plug into my output here. Now that what that's going to do is provide me, regardless of what it says here, 11 volt, at the other side out here, I'll use my analyzer, I'll plug this in here, and if you can see that, it says 12.6. So this says 11 volt, this says 12.6. So at this end here is 12.6. So if I grab my fridge again and uh, plug that in, what will happen is at the fridge end, you'll find that it'll say that it is um, going to be 12.6 at the fridge. So... Now the fridge sees 12.6, so that's going to run nice and happily now as you can hear it kicking in. Before it was just on the verge of not being able to run. So that's using the 20 amp, and you can use this quite happily as well. So if you've got a 20 amp one of these in your car, you can use this. When that gets down, you could pull this out and just configure it that way. Just say, well, that's the power coming out. It's going to go to this, and now that's going to provide 12.6. So that's the way you can run this now. That Nomad will run right down flat. 
uh, it'll go just 9 volt, just under, and then it'll click off, because this will take 9 to 32 volt and convert that. It's actually called a stepper. So that's what that can see. The other thing I can do here is, if I wanted to run two fridges, I could pull this out here. Again, I could plug my wire lead in like this. These are available from the partners as well. And then I can plug my fridge in here, which I will do. That fridge is seen 12.6 now. It's cut back in. And then I've got source. And now the other one is 12.6. So I could run two fridges off that if I wanted to. And that's going to see 12.6 volt. It might see 12.2, 12.6, all the way right down until this runs flat. You've got everything you possibly can at the Nomad. And also you've got yourself a charger, a proper DC-DC dual battery set up for your car, that when you're not using this, because if you're cycling your battery every day, there's really no need to worry about doing this. But if you do have a day where you've got no sun and your, or your panel's broken or whatever, you could just take your DC, uh, your Sega DC, plug it in, and then your output becomes what you plug your fridge into. And then that will give you 12.6 constant uh, voltage on the outside. That's the cool thing again about, you would have seen the, the, um, uh, the power analyzers well that you can use. Uh, they're just really handy to know what's coming out and also to test the system there. So when you look at a fridge, a new fridge, make sure you understand the fridge has operational ranges. It doesn't just run and run and run until the power su supply is flat. It likes certain voltages, um, and make sure you check the cutout and the cut-in voltage. And if you're not cycling off-grid uh, the way that you, you probably typically should be, like have a solar panel out every day, even if there's no sun out, it's still going to be putting amp into the unit. If you've got an efficient fridge, that's probably going to be enough not to worry about um, having to do, to do the step-up situation. But the step-up is really good because you may have this at half and borrow it to somebody. You can give them that step-up, they can plug it in, and then they can run their fridge. Um, and this can run dead flat, then you can pick it up the next day. The 20 amps really good, the 10 amp Sigur DC is also fine. You also have 10 amp Anderson to DC to Anderson. So again, you might look at using that in the vehicle and then you can use that for a step up for your fridge. That way you're getting the utmost everything possibly out of the battery source, but you also understand how your fridge works and its limitation. Again, the fridge does have a limitation. It doesn't simply run down and run and run and run off any sort of battery. Um, look at the low voltage cut. Uh, sorry, yeah, the low voltage cutout. Uh, sometimes you can turn them off with the Nomad. It's not necessary. The low voltage cutout is just to protect the, the battery um, from uh, running it completely dead uh, on a typical AGM lead acid and gel. So that with the Nomad, it doesn't really matter. So that's charging your fridge uh, or running your fridge, I should say, and how to get the most out of the Nomad and also what limitations you need to look for on your fridges when you're buying them um, as well. Make sure you check the manual on your fridge. And that way you're going to get the most out of the combination of your fridge and your Nomad. Again, thanks very much. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.